All right, today we're going to learn how to set up a double digest reaction. In the, uh, in the centrifuge in front of me, I have a PCR sample that I have prepped on glass milk. So I'm just spinning down the glass milk right now, and it is just about done. So while the silicon powder has still formed a coherent pellet, I want to quickly take that out and I'm going to aspirate pretty much all of my solution. So we're going to be doing a 50 microliter digest, which means I want to take uh, 43 microliters of my DNA solution into this reaction. Okay, so I take my P, my 100 microliter pipette, 40 mi 43 microliters there, and uh, oh, 43 and I'm going to aspirate that. So you want to be careful not to disturb the glass pellet at the bottom when we aspirate our DNA solution out. And now I'm going to transfer that into this 0.6 microliter tube here. This is a sterile tube. It's been autoclaved to make sure that there's no DNAs or contaminating organisms present. Not going to eject that. Again, sterile pipette tips. Uh, to prevent nuclease contamination of my digest reaction. We don't want this to get be, uh, chewed up by DNAs. So typically we want to dilute our DNA sample uh, after we take it from our prep, but I did uh, an extra desalting step to make sure that this would be pure. So I'm just going to take my 43 microliters of DNA directly from my PCR prep, and I'm going to add restriction enzymes to that. So I have CutSmart buffer here from NEB. I thawed that out beforehand. Uh, we want to make sure that that's very well mixed because when you cool down cut smarter, when you freeze it, a portion of the salt will precipitate out. So you want to make sure that those are all resuspended. I actually vortexed this earlier and then spun it back down. So that should be good. So to this 50 microliter digest, I'm going to add 5 microliters of cut smart. Already set to 5 microliters. And you'll note that I'm working under a flame here to prevent dust or anything from settling into my samples and my buffers. Mix that well by pipetting. And uh, you can and probably should calculate the number of units required to do your enzymatic digest. Uh, just from experience, I typically use one microliter of my restriction enzyme um, in a 50 microliter PCR digest reaction. I guess I'll get rid of that now. So here I have NDE1 and XHO1. This NDE1 has been aliquoted out from a larger portion. That's why it looks like that. And I'm going to take one microliter of each enzyme and transfer that to my reaction. Again, working under a flame. Since these enzymes are expensive, we want to really make sure that we're not getting any dust or anything in there. Okay. One thing to bear in mind is these enzymes are stored in a glycerol solution. So it's pretty viscous, which means if you dip your pipette in, say, a little bit too deep like that and you pull it out, you'll have a bunch of enzyme glopped on the outside of the pipette tip. Okay, you want to wipe that off before you put it, oh, I didn't even aspirate, but still. You want to wipe that off before you put that pipette tip uh, into your reaction to dispense the enzyme. Okay, now at that point I want to mix this by pipetting, and then this will be ready to put in a 37 degree incubator along with the rest of my enzymes, or along with the rest of my digests. Of course I happen to know that it's going to be a 37 degree reaction for all of these enzymes. There are a select few enzymes from, say, thermophilic organisms that need to be incubated at a higher temperature in order to work. 
Uh, likewise, you don't always use CutSmart as your buffer. There are also NEB buffers, 1.1, 2.1, 3.1, 1, and there are some other uh, kind of weird ones that you might use. Uh, of course, if you're not using NEB enzymes, then you would use whatever buffer is appropriate for the enzymes that you're using. Again, important to note, uh, regardless of the maker of your enzymes and what enzymes they are, you always want to keep them cold when they're removed from the freezer. So here I have them on an ice block. Uh, and I'm going to immediately put them back in the freezer when I put these in the incubator. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.